It is Thursday in the Queen City of Charlotte, North Carolina. Mama, we made it. Hey. Four day event for the first time ever, and we've made it to the grand finale of this year's ACC football kickoff uptown here at the Hilton in Charlotte. And we're getting ready to welcome in the final four teams of this now 17 team league. Clemson, North Carolina, NC State, and Syracuse making the trek down here to the south. We'll talk to them and we'll talk about them all day here on ACC Kickoff. Kickoff starts right now. Let's see if we can get our words out today. It is the final day, so we should be warmed Absolutely. up and ready to go, shall we? We're excited for the final day of ACC kickoff because uh, that means we are one day closer to the actual football season. And I know we're ready for talking season already to be over, and we're just ready to play some ball. But first, <laughs> we got to finish up today with, with the four teams. Coach, how you doing? Fantastic. Life is good. And Looking I'm so good. Thankful you look to be fantastic. Here. Yeah. Nice yeah. and clean, Coach. Hall of Fame head coach. You're amazing. Mark Richt, quarterback. <laughs> At Florida State, former first-round draft pick E.J. Manuel, Clemson captain, offensive lineman Eric McLean, and Virginia Tech Hall of Famer Eddie Royal. I am Taylor Tannenbaum, and we are ready for a fun-filled day with some contenders, some new faces as well in this league. So we're going to set it inside the press conference room because Pack and Justin have this guy standing by. A little go, Pack. Grayson McCall, the quarterback, next after the break. B.S. Stone. B.S. Stone. Sit back, stroll. stroll. Time to turn our attention to the Wolf Pack. In Dave Doran's 11th season with the Pack, he finished 9-4, and four, winning at least eight games in four straight seasons for the first time in program history. The Pack have numerous incoming transfers, including a new signal caller. That'd be Grayson McCall making the move from north, and that was Coastal Carolina to Raleigh. McCall passed for more than 1,900 yards with 10 touchdowns last season. Returning for the Pack also is the ACC Rookie of the Year. He certainly will be hooking up with Grayson a lot. Casey Concepcion and David Van on defense will be the key to replacing the biggest loss of the offseason. That'd be the linebacker of the year, ACC Defensive Player of the Year, Peyton Wilson, who is now in the NFL. We're now joined by the new signal caller, that being Grayson McCall, in addition to Emac making his first hey, appearance. Hey, debut, baby. Hey. Great to see y'all. Yeah. It's not about Grayson, it. it's about me right now. <laughs> Thanks for making a visit just a few <laughs> feet away. Grayson, walk us through the decision to join NC State. What did Coach Doran sell you on, and why did you think this would be a good fit for you? Yeah, you know, just when you walk into the building in Raleigh, it's an unbelievable culture, you know, something that's um, been in the works for a long time. You know, Coach Doran's been there for over 10 years, um, played a lot of good football, um, won a lot of football games, and played in a lot of big football games. And, um, you know, the offensive scheme that they run, you know, I thought was a really good fit for me. And then when I, whenever I was able to get there and uh, meet the guys and sit down and talk, and talk with Coach, it was, it was unbelievable. Whenever I walked out the doors, I knew it was the spot for me. But um, really wanted to go to a place where, um, you know, the program was set in stone and, and the standard was already built and um, something to really build off of and, and uh, take my, my playing style over there and really build upon what was already there. First of all, no socks. Already a plus. All right? <laughs> you can hang with us with I no like socks it. over here. That's like the it. first thing, all right? I like it. Um, you know, you mentioned having options, right? Yep. Again, this day and age, the student athlete has never had more power and control. Uh, and you mentioned the reasons why NC State. Well, give me the other pecking order that you were looking at, big mm. picture, because eventually NC State was the right fit. But what else was on the horizon? For yeah, so I only took one other visit. Went down to uh, Orlando and visited Central Florida. Um, obviously, Gus Malzahn down there and um, really had an interest in that program. And then, you know, it just kind of – it started early, and then I tried to cut it down because the window is so short, obviously. Um, talked to South Carolina a good bit. Baylor came in late. Um, uh, Oregon State, those guys. It was like, you know – New schools were getting new staff, so it was kind of, you know, a, a crazy period. But um, like I said, whenever I went to Raleigh and took my visit, I knew that was a place for me. You know, you had great success uh, at Coastal and so forth. But I'm always curious, when players are playing, do you ever notice what else is going on outside your universe? Because you're so focused on who you got this week. And, and being at Coastal, I mean, you've got to know about what NC State's all about, right? Carter Finley's a great place to, number one, watch a game, much less play. The fans are fantastic. But how much did you know about NC State even before you made the decision? Yeah, I think, um, you know, anytime a team's hot or, or you turn on a, a football game and you see the atmosphere or, or the energy that a team plays with, you know, 
um, it's exciting, it's inspiring, and, it, and it's fun to watch. And um, actually, never been to a game in Carter Finley. Heard great things. Heard it's an unbelievable atmosphere. So. Um, definitely looking forward to getting out there and playing in front of the Wolfpack fans for the first time. That's amazing. Grayson, I, we were just chatting a little bit, kind of a full circle moment yep. uh, for me here, calling a game back your freshman year and, and uh, a game against Louisiana uh, that really put you guys on the map. You had a game-winning drive, marched down the field, and I'm just like, who the heck is this cat? And uh, you, you really exploded onto the scene. You, you come to this team uh, that has a known commodity in KC Concepcion, and then the added talent yeah. that you have at wide receiver, how will the additions to that room really help him even play better? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm surrounded with ball players. You turn on the tape from last year, and obviously Casey stands out, but just the, the skill players and the guys up front are, I mean, they really stand out like a lot of really good football players. And then you throw in um, all the guys we've added in the receiver room and in the backfield and stuff like that. And um, I just, I, I think it's just going to help Casey out even more. You know, teams aren't going to be able to clue in on him. Uh, maybe go cloud on him or somehow bracket him and, and just let the other guys run free because we have a lot of speed and a lot of talent outside of KC. You ended last season in a difficult way with the head injury. What did you learn about the game and how difficult was that stretch for you? Yeah, really just, just um, learning about myself growing as a person. Um, you know, it was a tough time and uh, it's been a crazy journey. Um, can't believe I'm sitting here at ACC Media Day talking to you guys about to go play my sixth year for NC State, but um, you know, God works in mysterious ways, and um, it's been an unbelievable journey. And um, just throughout the transition, just learned so much about myself and was able to grow in um, so many different ways and um, have just such a, just a clear mind right now. I'm just ready to play football, man. Those injuries are always difficult yeah. because you can't see it or feel it immediately. You feel like you're ready. So what was that process like for you, feeling like, nah, I think I'm ready, and then the doctor's telling you, like, no, hold up? Yeah, I mean, when you're dealing with, with a head injury, obviously, it's it's really nothing to play with. and um, the type of guy I am, the type of team that I am, I wanted to get back out there as soon as I could. But, um, you know, talking to doctors and having visits and stuff like that, it just wasn't really, you know, the best scenario for me to for me to take. And um, it was tough, man. It was tough. But um, like I said, learned a lot and um, was, wanted to get back out there. And then at the end of the day, didn't know if I was going to be able to do this thing again. So, like I said, just so blessed and so excited to be able to sit here and talk to you guys and get ready to play another football season. Grayson, I mean, we've talked to a lot of transfers. I mean, Cam Ward was in here the other day, uh, Tyler Shuck. Again, big-time players, you're one of those guys too. When you come in as a new quarterback, the relationship with that, number one, the locker room, but you mentioned the weapons that you have. Just walk us through the amount of time, reps with other players, wide receivers in particular, because I think a lot of fans don't understand what we don't get a chance to see as opposed to, hey, on Saturday, here's the finished product. Yeah, I think, um, you know, just the transition in general was very smooth. Like, everyone genuinely welcomed me with open arms and was, like, excited that I was on campus and in the locker room. So, at first, it's just – building the relationship with those guys, getting to know the person and the player off the field. And then, um, I mean, you said it's a lot of reps. It's um, it's day in and day out. And um, it's the biggest part is when we're away from the facility or when we're away from the staff, what, what are we doing on our own to separate us ourselves from, you know, the other teams in the league? So, so, so walk us through like a typical day. I mean, you got KC, you got Noah, whatever the combination of the guys may be. Yeah, what would a day like just, in terms of reps? Just getting everybody out there. You know, it's, it's important for the young guys. So obviously we do our stuff with the staff and then um, it's coming back in the afternoons and trying to get on the grass or luckily at NC State, we have a really nice indoor that, that we can go use. And um, just just going through the tree and talking through different scenarios and, and working in space and, and finding different ways to get open. Um, you know, young guys, they see a route drawn up on a paper and sometimes they want to run it exactly how it's drawn. And you just have to kind of talk through those guys, different scenarios and, and you know, different break points and things like that. And um, it just comes down to timing and, and repetitions and then it carries out on Saturdays. How do you feel about these expectations that are growing? It seems like every day with, with NC State, the, the schedule is nice, uh, something you can really take advantage of there. The additions that you've made, uh, I, I mean, I think this is a double digit win team. That would be the second time ever. What is the expectation for you, what this team can do? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm glad the expectations are high. They should be. I think um, ever since, you know, Coach Dorn has been in Raleigh, the expectation has been to win. Um, that's our expectation this year. And, um, you know, just the whole, you feel the energy of the whole community uh, of Raleigh. Obviously, what the men's and women's basketball team did, baseball goes on the run. It just seems like it's kind of the year of the Wolfpack. And, um, it's our time to go out there and, and continue it. Does that, it. does that added pressure, I mean, as the quarterback in a new place, how do you separate? How do you just play ball? How do you focus on just you? Yeah, you know, I uh, I thrive in pressure. I uh, I love it. I think um, with with the support and the fan base that we have, I mean, they're great. And, um, you know, it just kind of adds fuel to the fire. So 
Um, we're excited. Um, I'm sure we're going to have a target on our back when we win some of these big games early. But um, just really excited, man. So fired up and ready to go. Don't forget about the cheese rolling champion. She yeah, also is yeah, from exactly. NC State, Abby. <laughs> exactly. I mean, come on now. It's the year of the Wolf Pack. Yeah. Everybody's rolling yeah. and maybe the football team as well. <laughs> Every season you've been able to elevate your game. Speak about what you attribute that to and obviously being a hard worker, but what allows you to – at every season, make sure you use the tools and experiences from past season to make sure that you use that to your advantage. Yeah, um, like obviously had a, had a lot of success early, and it was just how can I build upon it and continue to get better every year. And um, ever since I've got to Raleigh and been with Coach Nye and Coach Roper, I've learned so much already. And it's just continuing to to learn the game, um, be a master, and and really understand our offensive scheme and what we're trying to accomplish. And um, getting with my guy Anthony Boone, my quarterback trainer, my mentor, an uh, ACC guy that played at Duke back in the day, and oh. um, work with him a lot um, on the field and, and in the room watching tape and just um, continuing to grow, continuing to learn, and um, continuing to improve my feet, my release, everything. It's a, it's a continuing process and just trying to get a little bit better than I was the day before. Is there something outside your team that you can't wait to see that you've always thought, hey, I played at Coastal Carolina from an ACC perspective. Forget NC State is the answer. Outside of Wolfpack Nation, is there something you're looking forward to? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think it's pretty obvious. It's it's week two, coming back home, playing in Bank of America. Um, <laughs> nice. You know, a stadium that I, I grew up going to as a kid, watching the Panthers play. Is, um, you know, kind of a full circle moment and, and something that's going to be super surreal. So i um, definitely looking forward to that. And that environment will be out of oh, sight. Man. Two Can't incredibly wait. passionate yeah. fan bases. Oh, the color palette for that game. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's going to be tremendous. Yeah. I mean, it really is. You know that. It's going to be fun to see. No One doubt. thing I would love to just hear from your perspective, uh, a, a lot of you know outsiders, maybe people that, that watch this football from afar, uh, are going to say the NC State defense is in Pittsburgh with Peyton Wilson. Yeah. What have you seen from those guys in the spring, offseason, summer, uh, as they've continued to grow and get better? A bunch of hungry guys. Um, you know, I think when you have a guy like Peyton Wilson and you have guys that are able to play with him and play around him, um, it's contagious, and the play style and the energy and the day-to-day -day grind is contagious. And um, you can tell that these guys are hungry, that uh, maybe they're not getting the attention they deserve. Um, there's been great defense in Raleigh for a long time now, and, and they play good defense every week. And um, spring ball was highly competitive going at those guys every day and just – um, you know, iron sharpening iron. And so those guys are hungry, man. They're, they're ready to go. And um, I can see it in their eyes. I can see it in the way they work and their energy every day in the building. So um, love going against those guys, working with them, and really excited to see what they do. Is there an alpha over there? Is there a guy? He's here, Davin Van. Yeah, yeah he's the guy in the building. Um, that was kind of my go-to guy whenever I got to Raleigh. If I needed anything, um, he's the guy. Um, coach Thunder, our strength coach, says, you know, Davin's got the blood in the bricks. He's been here. He's done it. <laughs> I like that. Um, they don't just give the number one jersey out in Raleigh. You have to earn it, and it's something that's really special. So, obviously, Davin wears that, and um, he's the alpha in the building for sure. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you this season. Right now, E. Mac, he has an 88 rating. He's okay with that. That's and good. you know what? Yeah. There's only room for growth. That's, that's right. right. That's right. 98 by the end of the year. <laughs> Let's, go. Let's go. Grayson McCall from the NC State Wolfpack. Looking forward to seeing what they have in store this season with Dave Dorn. We'll be hearing from him later today. As Dave Dorn is set to take the podium in just a little bit. So let's focus on the Wolfpack right now. They made some upgrades this yeah. offseason at multiple positions, both sides of the ball. Eddie, which upgrades are you excited to see in a couple of weeks? The, the running back position, uh, just because that's where they struggled for so long. It seemed like they just couldn't get a running game going. So now I feel like with Jordan Waters, he brings some stability to, to that position. He's uh, a beast. Uh, yeah, and, and he can do it all. Pass protection, he can catch the ball out the backfield, and we know what type of runner he is. So I'm, I'm excited to see that part of it. Yeah, me too. Uh, I think he's going to be a huge piece for their offense. Offensive line seems like they got a bunch of redshirt juniors and seniors coming back, grad transfers. Uh, Grayson McCall is the big piece that I want to see. You know, can you can, can you bring over what you did at Coastal Carolina, a three-time player of the year in that conference? Now you're in the ACC competing against other good quarterbacks, and I think he will. I think he's a versatile player. He'll be a great fit in Robert and I's offense too. I agree. I watched him on television on the, in, during the spring game, and uh, being a quarterbacks coach for all these years just – Clean fundamentals, just great, great balance in the pocket. Throws a beautiful ball, very accurate, athletic enough to make plays. And then just a, the confidence of being a champion, the confidence of mm -hmm. being player of the year, uh, being you know the best player in, in his league for, for three years in a row. I mean, he's, he's got what it takes. The big question, too, on the defensive side of the ball is how do you replace 11? 
Peyton Wilson. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't get to watch him on Saturdays because fortunately for him, he'll be playing on Sundays in the NFL. So how do they replicate at least the production this upcoming season without Peyton? Well, I think it's a committee thing for them, too. I right. mean, you know, Peyton was amazing. He, he was a – he's going to be remembered. He's a legend at NC State. Right. But sure. this is Dave Doran's team. <laughs> he's a defensive-minded coach. And yeah. so with his pass and, and the linebacker, they're going to still have uh, Devon Boykin and Aiden White in the secondary. They'll be fine. They'll scheme it up, and they'll be able to still get those sacks and tackles. I'd say Sean Brown is a name to keep an eye on. Yep. I, I saw the way that he played, loved it, plays with his hair on fire. I love him as a player. And we've talked to Dave Doran a couple of times since the season ended, and the name Sean Brown continues yep. to come up, and they're going to use him in a multitude of ways. Dave Dorn right now taking the podium inside the press conference room. Take a listen. How much of a role has the transfer portal played for you and your program? Yeah, you know, I think year to year. Um, for us, it's just another method of adding talent, uh, adding the key ingredients to the roster, and, and it's all based on need and where you may have a void. You know, in the past, um, pre-portal, you would look into the junior college areas. Uh, and, and sometimes find a transfer that was a grad uh, to fill a spot where maybe you had an injury or a player left early to go to the NFL. Obviously, as you guys know now, there's outflow and inflow coming in at different times uh, differently than there ever has been. And so for us, it's assessing your roster. It's never ending. It changes weekly on kind of where you're at uh, based on the health of what's going on, who's coming back, where you think you need to be better. And just getting into to last season and how all this stuff came together, I mean, we've uh, revamped our recruiting office two years ago. And, and once this stuff started, felt like we were chasing our tails a little bit. And so really came up with a plan um, really based on NFL model on how they assess, uh, how they evaluate once players uh, are deemed players they would want on their rosters, how do they go about the process and, and then Integrating that into our program, um, have a great recruiting staff. And so it was regionally based. And you know, you look at Jordan and, and Grayson, two guys that chose to move on from their schools. They were guys that are in state players to us and guys that uh, I knew would have personal value in staying home and, and doing something with a team that has the largest alumni base in the state. And sometimes things just kind of click, you know, and, and there was a bunch of guys in this cycle that wanted to come back to the state. Noah Rogers, Dale and some others, uh, several guys, you know, that were from Raleigh or from North Carolina that left and wanted to return back closer to their families and be a part of our program. And we were just able to get the right type of guys. And that's the biggest thing, you know, when you want talent, that's one thing. Um, being here 12 years now, I'm not going to take a risk on the culture with that talent. You know, you have to find guys that fit what we're all about. And it's earned, not given. It's guys that, that want to work and that enjoy the brotherhood of the game, that are willing to sacrifice um, for the cause. And, and that's really, you know, we were blessed this year. We had a bunch of really good players that fit the uh, kind of the design of what we were doing, uh, that fit the returning players as well. You know, guys like Davin that have helped build this program. We don't want to sacrifice all the hard work of the players that have been here for a guy that's just coming in for a year. They needed to understand that they were joining something and, and in that helping them continue to grow what we do and increase what we're doing. And, and so we're very pleased. You know, obviously, two of the guys are here. But the team's you know pretty mixed. If you look at that recruiting class, there's still a, a great emphasis in high school recruiting as well. Coach, follow the center aisle up to the left gentleman in the white shirt. Coach, these last couple of years, your team has talked about wanting to be different, doing things that take this program to the next level. What have you seen from your guys this year in 24 that might prove that they are different? Well, we're about to hit the grass on Wednesday. And so, you know, I think every day we're out there, it's, it's a measuring stick. It is. And you know, we're one of five programs um, over the last four years that have won eight or more games in college football. And so we've sustained a level of competitive greatness that not many people have been able to do. Um, with that being said, we want to win a championship. And so different is that. You know, it's taken the program from the second most wins since 2020 to winning the league. And that is different. And so, you know, what we did last year and the year before and the year before was good. You know, winning nine games is good. 
Uh, we don't want to be good. We want to be the best at what we do. And, and so these guys understand that. We've talked a lot about what it looks like um, to be the best and, and how do we do that and using the voice of the players to describe that. And, and then what does it not look like? What do we need to stay away from? What do we need to safeguard our program from? And so, you know, there's been a lot of discussion. There's, there's obviously been a lot of hard work by these guys and, and our staff as we evaluate our schemes um, to utilize the roster talent and to utilize the coaching talent that we have and to be integrated together in that. And so each day, it's, it's really a challenge. You know, you go out there day by day just trying to be better than you were. You know, a year ago Wednesday when we started camp, that's a measuring stick to where we're going to be when we start camp on this Wednesday. And, and it's everything. You know, it's how the grades come in from the summer. It's what Thunder says about the summer workouts. It's what Justin Smith says about the guys in the training room. Uh, it's when I go down to the nutrition area and ask how the guys are doing. All the comments add up. You know, and so you're always looking for signs of improvement and signs where, hey, we need to call this up. We need to talk about this. We're better than this. And just holding each other accountable to what we want. We want to be elite. And, and that means everything that we do can't cut corners. You know, it's got to be something that we push forward together. Again, let's follow the center aisle up, this time to the right, gentlemen in the green. Corey Smith with Back Pride. Dave. You know, the last few years, the running game hasn't quite been there for this offense, but you get a guy like Jordan Waters out of the portal. You know, how much better does that make this run game, and, and do you feel like that's more of a bell cow back type of guy for this offense too? Well, yeah, Jordan's going to help us in the run game for sure. I think you know the whole offense um, in general, it always starts with what is the quarterback going to do, right? And, and we feel great about what Grayson can do. Um, and then the offensive line, the blocking schemes that those guys are good at and the depth that you have there, the, how the tight end plays into that run game. And then the receivers, the blocking on the perimeter is critical. You know, it is. And so there's no doubt being balanced on offense um, is something that you know I like. At the same time, we're going to play to our strengths. And to answer that question today, you know, we need to get on the grass. We need to go through training camp. We need to see where we're at feel good about not just Jordan, but the running back room in general. Uh, it's a good room. Uh, there's great leadership, uh, but there's good depth, and there's competition, and the guys are working hard. And Jordan's done a really nice job showing them what it looks like, you know, coming back from the season he had last year. And, and you have young guys below him. And that's part of your job as an older player is this is what it looks like, this is what it doesn't look like, and holding those guys to a standard. And as we get into this, I know Coach and I and, and the staff on offense, offensive football has changed a lot. You guys know that with the rule changes in football, with the, the linemen downfield and RPOs and the tempo. And, and, and now you have another change. You know, you have sideline communication, uh, which allows our coaches to speak to these guys in the huddle uh, on the field. And so you're going to see another evolution in how that plays into offensive football. Uh, this fall, which really hasn't been talked about a lot. But, you know, I'm excited to see how that does things for us and how we can take advantage of what those rules bring. And, you know, I think for Grayson and for any quarterback, he would tell you having a run game helps. It changes the coverages you're throwing the ball against. It does. And, and if they're worried about what's going on with those handoffs and, and the pressure we can put on people, not just with the runs, but the RPOs behind them, it opens up a lot of things. And when you're talking about getting one-on-one -on -one coverage with the receivers that we now have, obviously KC coming back, but the way Dakari Collins came on in the spring, the way that you know we've seen Wesley Grimes and Noah Rogers um, come in also from the transfer portal, the, the weapons are different for him out there. And so it really plays into the entire thing. And not that you just call plays where you're taking what they give, but sometimes you are. you know. And when you can spread the ball around to different people, it just opens up things and creates a different pressure system on the defensive coordinator. And that's one of the things that I really like about football. You know, it's just trying to create chaos uh, on the other side of the football. You know, if you're on offense, if you're on defense, whatever that is, let's make their jobs really hard. Coach, right side, front row, right in front of you. Coach, Dan Tortora, hey, wake up call DT.com. How are you? Good, bud. Looking at the fact that, like you said, you've spent a lot of time within the ACC, you've seen change. You've seen new institutions come in now, SMU, Cal, Stanford. 
we see accomplish greatness, but when you look at this conference throughout, how would you define it and who's coming in and what this looks like as you step forward as a coach, one of the longest tenured coaches in the conference? You know, I think maximizing the gift that God gave you um, to me, uh, one of the tenets, one of the standards of our program is no underachievement allowed, you know, and I think that's just maximizing the opportunity you have as a person. Accomplishing greatness is that, you know, when you go to bed and lay your head down at night, did you do everything you could that day to be the best version of yourself? And if I get enough players and coaches to do that on a daily basis compared to those we compete against, the score ends up being the consequence of those actions. And, you know, what does greatness look like for NC State? Obviously, we want to hold that trophy up at the end of the year. Okay, and there's a lot of ways to define it. But day in and day out, it's about maximizing the gift. You know, I think we're all, you know, you, you expect to wake up every day. You expect for things to be a certain way, and we all know that's not reality. You know, every day we get is a blessing. And so taking advantage of that blessing, it's something that, you know, the older I get, um, the more that I value, I do. And, and really the relationships and the gratitude I have for the staff that I get to work with, for the players that I get to coach, I mean, I got a great job. I got great guys to work with, and I'm thankful for that. You know, I'm thankful that these guys are here. I'm thankful that they're getting ready to go to work and the, and the work they put in this summer. And they know it's going to be hard, and, and I look forward to that with them. You know, when you talk about accomplishing greatness, I don't think it's just something you can define in one sentence. I mean, it's football seasons are crazy. I mean, the emotional swings that take place day to day, minute to minute, the amount of things that happen over the course of the year and how fast it goes within that million things that goes on. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a fun journey, with these guys. And so just, you know, really thankful um, for the opportunity to do this with them and looking forward to where it goes. Coach, thank you. You referenced these guys. Let's go ahead and start meeting these guys. You can you. trade places with Grayson. Year 12 for Dave Dorn. It all gets started on a Thursday night. We're excited. ACC Huddle's going to be there against Western Carolina. But that big one highlighted there right here in Charlotte, Duke's Mayo Classic against Tennessee. They have a favorable schedule. It looks like on paper we'll see what the pack can do to take advantage of it. The Wolf Pack once again in the press conference room because Dave Dorn going to join Pack Justin and Tom Luganville, who has now joined the set. That's coming up with more from ACC Football Kickoff. They ain't taking me in and I'm fed up. Yeah, but... Welcome back to the press conference room. Let's continue this conversation about the Wolf Pack. Minutes ago, we had Grayson McCall on. Now let's get the head coach of NC State, Dave Doran, Tom Luganville. Welcome back. I know Thank this you, is sir. the best location, right? That's right. We're not comparing sets. I just float. That's what I do. There you go. Go here, do that, be there, do that, <laughs> sit with coach. You're a chameleon. You <laughs> do it, it all, I and do. I love the green. Uh, thanks. Coach, what more can you ask from NC State in the past few months? The men's Final Four, the women's Final Four, College Baseball World Series. What's the energy and excitement based off of that success coming into this year? Yeah, it's great momentum. Yeah, I mean, we're riding, like I said, we're riding a big red wave right now, and there's a lot of people behind it. Our fan base uh, is so passionate, and I'm happy for them to you know, have gone through the, from the bowl to uh, Coach Keats in his season, Coach Moore in his season, and Coach Avent in his season. You know, And there's a lot more. You know, you are wrestling teams cruising, uh, track and field, cross country. So many of the sports, gymnastics has done such a great job cheerleading. So NC State's doing a great job, and the fans have done a tremendous job supporting all the sports. And the cheese rolling champion. That's right. <laughs> you can't forget that. Abby yeah. Lampy, got to give her love. <laughs> how, how has the summer been? You, you come off of spring football, the transfer portal closes, you get your team together for the summer, you're heading into camp. Um, expectations, what would you like to see as you head into training camp with this, uh, this group this year? Yeah, well, you know, it started in January, so you have to set yourself up for success, and Walked into the team room in January, 40-plus new players in there when you count uh, transfer portal guys, early enrollees, and, and walk-ons. And So I had a lot of work to do in team bonding, and, and we did a great job as a staff, um, brought in some really good people to help us, and the players bought into that. They understood okay. that the glue of the roster is what's going to make a difference on fourth and one, and not just the talent. You know, it's the love that they have for each other. and All those things brought us through the winter program into spring ball to get the the new guys kind of integrated into the systems. And I thought 
each day there was different things that we um, set out to work on and did and exposed some things where we need to get better. Okay. And that's really what the summer was about was here's the areas scheme wise. Here's the areas, you know, player wise, here's the, the developmental skills that we need guys to work on. And now when we get out there next Wednesday, you know, it's a measuring stick yeah. every day. Like here's where we're at. Here's where I thought we were going to be. We may be ahead of schedule, may be behind. And, and then that's our job as coaches to tweak it from there. Uh, we just ask these guys to come in every day with a great attitude to work hard and to take their learning opportunity to heart. Coach, I know you want to talk about your team, but I want to talk about you a second. Uh, I thought one of the things that you said in your press conference was really interesting about two years ago from a recruiting perspective, knowing that a new wave was coming. One thing I know about coaches, you guys love to actually coach. How much coaching would you now do on a typical day? In a perfect world, you'd like it to be 100% of your time. <laughs> but actual coaching on a typical day as a head coach is what percentage now for you? Yeah, I think it's different. Some head coaches are calling plays, and, and I'm not. You know, I'm, I'm involved in the schemes. I know the schemes. I know the systems um, so that I can provide assistance and give input. Um, and I'm really more involved with the player development side, uh, you know, the camaraderie of the team, making sure that our standards are, are not being ignored and they're upheld and, and getting guys to grow individually throughout the roster. Um, back when I was younger as a head coach and I was – literally coaching on the defensive side of the ball uh, like an assistant coach at times I was coaching a lot more uh, that was by choice you know and I think you still have that opportunity you just have to delegate and so I've chosen to be more of a CEO I guess of a program um, where I can be more involved in recruiting when needed where I can be more involved on special teams when needed and let my coaches coach I've got great experienced staff 345 years of coaching amongst the 10 guys in that room and those guys do a great job. Do you think moving forward that that number gets smaller for you and for all coaches as far as the actual whistle around the neck and, hey, here's technique and all that stuff? Is it becoming now so NFLized <laughs> that you become really, hey, I'm, I'm wearing a suit. Let's get to work. Again, I think it's based on how you want to delegate. You know, if you want to be involved in everything, you're not going to coach a whole lot. And you have to hire good people. If that's something you want to do to be on the grass coaching more, then you got to let other people do some of those things for you. And uh, obviously, you know, with the fundraising now that's been put on coaches, um, there's more of that than I've ever had to do. And so other things have had to be delegated and, and that's okay. You know, uh, some people complain about the way things are. And, and to me, it's let's focus on solutions. And that's where I've been is just trying to find ways to be successful with our program. Coach, your program, I think, is revered as one of the top developmental programs in terms of bringing guys in, identifying them, developing them into NFL caliber players in yeah. many instances. And now we've got the transfer portal. And I'm curious to get your sense of what are, what are the critical factors? What are the boxes that have to be checked for you to feel comfortable that you're bringing an element into the program, obviously being productive, obviously playing, Guys like Grayson McCall, Jordan Waters, they've played a lot of football. Right. They're really, really productive. But how careful do you have to be in that world now to make sure that you don't disrupt your chemistry, that you're improving your football team, and that you've got enough time to actually go out there and do your homework on the guy? Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> every one of these boxes you're talking about, I pay so much attention to. Okay. And uh, we don't want to lose out on the developmental side of our program because it is something we do really well. Mm -hmm. And so there is a blend of the youth and the experience that we're trying to have on our roster. And, and really the secret sauce is where do we need to add experience and where don't we? You know, if you have a young player that you're, this guy's ready, yeah, you don't need to do that. If you have a young, hey, this guy needs a little bit more seasoning, needs a little bit more time in the oven, you know what I mean? Then, well, how are we going to do it? Can we move a player there? No, we can't. Then we need to add a player that can do that for us. And when we add one, it needs to be one that fits. Yeah. And, and that's the key, the fit. And I say that to every player I recruit. Like, to me, recruiting is a fact-finding mission as a student athlete to find the right fit mm -hmm. where you can grow into the best version of yourself. And do we fit with you and do you fit with us? And we do a lot of homework. There's a lot of questions to a lot of people. Uh, there's a lot of engagement. How many times we can get them in front of us so that we're having these kind of face-to-face, sure. -face, eye eye-to-eye conversation. Because I don't want to put him in that box either where he's not one of us. Mm -hmm. He needs to fit what we do because college football is a lot of work, you know, and, and there's only so many Saturdays you get to play. 
And so those other days, you got to enjoy the environment you're in. And so, yeah, we have a great environment, but we also need guys that enjoy that type of environment. And we search hard for that. Yeah. You mentioned the oven. One player feels like you threw in the microwave and immediately had success was KC Concepcion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When did you notice early on that he could be this special, and what are your expectations on him taking a leap forward? Well, during recruiting, we saw it. You know, we could see, we saw his skill set on the field, and that's in person. What I call a live evaluation is a really critical part of the recruitment, and knowing where you're at with this guy. Like this guy needs a couple years. When I saw him on our uh, in our camp running routes, I'm like, this guy could play here right away if he can manage the grind of it all and so coach and I was really careful not to put too much on him early you saw that shift after our bye week and it was very obvious that he needed to carry the weight and was ready to do so and so you know really impressed with the way he managed the weight that he had on him because he was playing a lot of positions in the offensive scheme last year and excited for him now that there's more weapons around him because it's going to be harder to key in on number 10. Coach, uh, if I think Dave Dorn, NC State football, what's the first thing that pops in my head from a player perspective? Peyton Wilson's the guy yeah. in every sense. How he treats himself, the body, other people, the way he plays, what he does off the field. He'll be a great pro and all that stuff. He's now gone. I know you wish you had him for at least one more <laughs> year. Well, we're sitting talking about all these offensive weapons. Uh, Gibson's done an incredible job from a defensive coordinator position. What happens now in the middle? Because, uh, listen, Peyton made plays. If you watch an NC State game, dude's ubiquitous. I mean, he made plays <laughs> all over the place. So how do you fill that void? Is it multiple guys? What happens on that front? Yeah, anytime you lose a great player, and I don't care what position we're talking about, there's always that talk. And to me, it's about the guys around them, not the guy replacing them. Mm. The guys that are returning, Davin Van, Aiden White, guys that are starters on our defense for a long period of time, they need to be better than they were, and they will be because they're another year in the program, another year of, of, of training with our strength staff, sitting in the position rooms, understanding the schemes, and growing up you know, emotionally, understanding that. Peyton was a much better player in his last year than he was the year before. We expect the same growth. You know, The year before that, we lost Drake Thomas. We lost Isaiah Moore, two great players for us, and we didn't step back. We stepped up, You know, and I, I expect the same thing. We also brought in some transfers. You know, Jihad Carter was an All-American a couple years ago at Syracuse. Really good football player. And so, you know, we've added some pieces that are also experienced. But it's not going to be because Sean Brown's now lined up where Peyton was that everything's the same. It's going to be because all the different parts work well together. Tony Gibson does a tremendous job. So does his staff. And, you know, those guys will have them in the right places. And, and then it's up to the kids to go make the plays. And I kind of like that the guys are getting talked about that way. You know, I mean, I do. I think that feeds a fire for them from a defensive perspective and you're a defensive football coach and, and obviously when the quarterback is a threat to run and you've got to account for his legs it just puts so much strain on you yeah and in bringing grace and mccall into the program and in his background of just whether it's improvisational plays or being utilized as a designated runner could we see some of that in this year's iteration of the offense just to really put the pressure on the other side of the football yeah, I think dual threat quarterbacks um, force the defense to play with all 11 guys yeah. in the run game. And, you know, Grayson obviously does that. You know, um, he's not going to be running triple option football like he had right, at one yeah. time. <laughs> but we're going to use his legs for yeah. sure, you know, and he's going to use them without us asking us to, you know, on drop back passes when things aren't there. He can get away and make things happen, not just scrambling to run, but scrambling to find guys down the field and letting those guys do it. Yeah. And the. The beauty of, you know, having a quarterback like that, uh, defensively, you got to decide what you want to do when you have KC and Noah Rogers right. and some of these guys. Justin Jolie, our tight end, had a really good spring. Uh, are you going to keep a spy in there for him and let us have one-on-one -on -one coverage, or are you going to really get an umbrella back there and now things open up for Grayson as a scrambler? Yeah, no doubt. Looking forward to seeing how everything shakes out this season. I covered some of Justin's game at UConn. He's a big fella. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's really impressive. We played UConn a year ago. I remember warm-ups looking down the other side of the field, and I saw him. I'm like, wow, this guy's got a great body, you know, and he's a good football player. He's a great young man. We're excited about having him in the program and the ability to develop him, too. By the way, before I let you go, you mentioned looking before. I always wonder what head coaches are talking about. 
before a game. I mean, so you're really scoping the field going, <laughs> man, that's 75 is a load, man. I mean, it's what, a, what you're hoping is you're not looking over there going, <laughs> our guys don't look like that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, like I said, it's same in recruiting. The live evaluation is yeah. different than the yeah. film. When you when you watch the film, you know what you think you're getting. You step on the grass and you look, all right, that guy's look exactly like I thought or he's taller than I thought or, man, that that corner's really short. Yeah. And they listed him at 5'10". Like, yeah, he looks like he's 5'8", you know. So, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at everything. And I think, you know, power of observation is a big thing as a coach and you got to be able to look around and see what's going on, not just with their body types, but how they're presenting themselves, the – the look in their eyes, you know, all of it. You know, you're looking at everything. Well, best of luck this season, Coach. Appreciate you making the time. Yeah, Dave Dorn from Go NC Pack. State. Absolutely. It's been a year of the Wolf Pack. Back here at ACC kickoff. Go Pack. Dave Dorn is going to be joining us in just a little while. We'll be back with more after the break from Charlotte. Welcome back to ACC football kickoff. NC State Wolfpack time and Dave Doran's 11th season. They finished nine and four, winning at least eight games in four straight seasons for the first time in program history. That's consistency. The pack has numerous incoming transfers, including a new signal caller who you've seen walking around here today. Grayson McCall makes the move from Coastal Carolina to Raleigh. He passed for more than 1900 yards with 10 touchdowns last season and returning for the pack. Includes 2023 ACC Rookie of the Year, this superstar, Casey Concepcion, Davin Van on defense, rocking that number one. And he's going to be big, continue to take more steps. No more Peyton Wilson, but they still got some dogs on that defense. <laughs> Joined now by head coach Dave Dorn. Coach, we were joking in the break. We're like, hey, we're all getting old. You're like, yeah, I don't feel like it. I'm still kicking 20-year-old butts every day. <laughs> You're going into year 12 at NC State, which is awesome to see the longevity. You walked away from spring feeling what about this team and this program this year? Yeah, I mean, it's a very motivated group. Uh, I think the most balanced we've probably been when you look at the three phases uh, of the game. Uh, spring game, spring ball was back and forth, uh, which was fun to see. I know on defense, offense, you come off the field feeling a certain way as a head coach. When the practice went back and forth, that's a good thing. You know, you want to see both sides of the ball playing at a high level. And then we've worked really hard, not just in developing players, but adding uh, some older players to the roster that create that competitive depth. Coach, I'm just wondering, every time you turn on a tape, that defense looks the same. Mm -hmm. Guys are flying around, hard hitting. Just wondering how you maintain that when the roster's changing so often. Well, it's recruiting, it's development, it's retention, and it's staff. You know, Tony Gibson and the defensive staff have been together now going on six years. Uh, we haven't had a staff change. And those guys are speaking the same language. They understand the system. The players, same thing. They understand it inside and out. And there's a level that you have to play at to be on that field. you got to earn the right to be out there and hunt. And that's part of what this defense is about. And, you know, I love that mentality. Coach, looking at the offensive side of the ball, we just kind of showed your you know, signal caller there and Grayson yeah. McCall and, and a guy that you know, I'm very familiar with, saw him at his coastal days, called some of his games. He brings a different element to your game. Why was he the quarterback you went after this offseason? He's a winner. Uh, Three-time player of the year. Won a bunch of championships. Carries a big chip on his shoulder. A uh, young man from Charlotte, so being an in-state player added to the mix. But just in the first conversation we had, I could tell that there was just a, the intangibles that I look for in a quarterback. The way that he's going to lead is his confidence, uh, but also the way that he cares about people. Um, it's just a perfect fit, you know. And we were fortunate, you know, sometimes things go your way when you're looking for a guy and, you know, it wasn't very hard to, hey, do we want this? Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, let's see if we can get him on the team. And it didn't take long because, you know, he wanted his family to be a part of this last year as well. And he said after he visited you guys, it was over. I don't know when that timetable happened, but he said that he felt everything that you just said, which that's great when that marries up. Yeah, when you're number one guy and, you know, he's on the board and you get him and – we're his number one school. That union's pretty special. It doesn't always happen that way, as you know. And uh, I wish it would have been immediate. I wish he would have committed. <laughs> I, I, I had to suffer a couple weeks yeah. while he visited other schools. But, yeah, it all ended up the way it should have. Yeah. Coach, uh, going back to the defense, do you guys live tackle in camp uh, some? And if you do, what's the philosophy behind that? Yeah, you know, that's kind of the magic of camp, right? How much is too much? And, uh, 
we have our scrimmages like everybody does. And then, you know, within some of the practices, we'll have a three-period live section where uh, I think it's hard to, to practice goal line offense. Right. And goal line defense and thud. You know? I always it, thought it's hard to get good at tackling if you don't tackle. No question. <laughs> yeah. So we'll have some, you know, short periods where maybe, mm -hmm. hey, we're going to have nine short yardage plays right. here and it's live. And so it, it's not about, to me, uh, having five scrimmages, you know. Right. it's And even when you scrimmage, sometimes it's, hey, this guy's only going to get two series because he's right. proven he's ready. So you really, it's player by player and both sides of the ball. Every time we have those moments, you know, right. how many snaps is enough and who needs the work. Right. Coach, you bring Jordan and Grayson uh, <clears throat> to represent NC State. They, they just got there a couple months ago. What have they shown you as far as leadership that they deserve the right to be here? Yeah, well, it's day to day, how they act, how they integrated, uh, the way they worked at practice. Uh, when they get to practice, what they do when they're in the locker room, what are they doing, the way the guys look at them. And obviously, they've earned the right to be here. I mean, they're proven <clears throat> players. Uh, I look at this uh, ACC Media Days as kind of the culmination for players. When you can make it a seniors thing, I like to do that. And, and these are guys that have earned that opportunity. Coach, looking at Casey Concepcion last year, I mean, just exploded yeah. onto the scene. And a guy that, you know, at the end of the year, throwing it, catching it, running it, I mean, he, he truly was doing everything. Uh, as we see this graphic here, you now added a ton of guys around him, Noah Rogers, uh, Joe Lee that came in, uh, a couple other wide receivers as well. How will that, adding that type of talent, help him? Because I think a lot of people will be like, oh, well, you brought other people, he's going to be – his role will be diminished. How will that help him having other guys? Yeah, I think just being able to spread the ball around more uh, and not allow people to zero in on this guy and where is number 10 every play. They're probably going to still have to do that because we're going to get him the ball. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it doesn't put the pressure on him to play running back like we did last year. You know, we have a lot of good running backs now. And so that room helps KC be more of a receiver and, and get him the ball other ways. And, and for the quarterback, knowing that whatever the defense tells him to do, he can do it. And there's a guy there that can make him pay for it, right? If you're going to play one-on-one -on -one coverage with Dakari and Noah Rogers or Wesley Grimes, uh, that helps. You know, and, and Justin Jolie having a tight end that can run and catch like him adds another dimension. How unique was that? I mean, the, the amount of responsibility that KC was given last year. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, it's not – it's rare, right? Yeah, and, and it, you know, as a staff, we knew coming out of spring ball and, and even training camp that he was dynamic. Uh, Robert was worried about putting too much on him too early because that's a big responsibility. And once we hit the bye week and, and really looked at where's our production coming from, it was like – all right, well, we're going to go that direction. Hey, this is the guy that makes the thing go. And, and so KC took on a lot of responsibility, and he really managed it. And I think it helped him because he was sore at the end of the year. He took a lot of hits. Mm. And knowing what – here's my off season, and here's why I need to do this, and I'm better prepared for what that looks like. Coach, is there anything that you learned from uh, the B.A. Uh, situation last year, having a quarterback come in and be the guy that's kind of going to help Grayson along? You know, every year is different in that room. Uh, last year <laughs> is a book, you know, and it would take forever to talk about that situation. <clears throat> but really excited about how it ended for Brennan and, and what he was able to do. Uh, I've had a multitude of transfers at quarterback now, going back to Jacoby Brissett, Ryan Finley. And so I've seen it different ways come out. And, and Grayson walked in the door and everybody, open arms, you know, uh, invited him in. And the way that he works, uh, the way that he treats people, it, it's easy to respect him, you know. And then when you see his stats, you're like, holy cow, like yeah. this guy's throwing for 10,000 yards. Yeah. He's three-time player of the year. He's won this many championships. So he's a proven player, you know. But the way that he treats people and the way that he works is what really gets him that respect from the locker room. Coach, during your time, you guys, not, you guys haven't been just good, but very good. Uh, and now you're, you're working towards being great. What, what's going to get you over the hump? Yeah, you know, it's one player, one player, right? You know, you get into these one possession games, and that's the difference in, in what kind of season you're going to have, I think. And you need a player that can make that play for you. I think we have more competitive depth than we've ever had uh, on the offensive side of the football. And so when you're talking about college football now, it's win the league or be in the top 11. That's what gets you to be great, to be right. in that 12-team playoff. And so for us, it's that 10th win, 11th win, getting into that platform and, and finding ways to win those one-possession games that we're going to be in. There'll be five or six of them. Right. And every year you have five or six one-possession games. Coach, I always wonder, uh, 
I know it's a pain in the butt to come here. You guys just want to coach football. <laughs> Is there any coaches that you look forward to seeing outside of a competitive atmosphere? Uh, a lot of our coaches, are, you know, we get along, you know, and, and seeing each other. I've known uh, Dave Clawson and Pat Narduzzi a long time now. and But, you know, every time you see these guys, coaching is a fraternity man i mean it, we do a rare thing and not many people do what we do and understand how hard it is and i have great respect for all these guys and and you know uh even seeing the new coach uh in there at breakfast from syracuse i'm like how you doing man like you know because year one's hard i don't care even if you're a guy you know coach left uh, george is good at miami year one at whatever school you go to yeah Nobody can understand what that's like. Well, it, the first it, time head coach in that, the, the weight of the responsibility is just like, wow. Yeah, man, it's <laughs> drinking tequila out of a fire hose. Is how <laughs> I to, you know? I mean, it's hard. Yeah. And so I, you know, and I'm pulling for all these guys until we play against each other. Right. I mean, I want our teams to do well. Yeah, I think I'm good on drinking tequila out of a hose. <laughs> I, I'm okay on that. We, we asked Justin Wilcox, the head coach at Cal, because both of you love fishing, what yeah. he caught this summer. And he said he's keeping it close to the chest. He didn't want to share. But I got to ask you, the fisherman, did you catch anything good this summer? Angler. Yeah, I mean, we had a bunch of good trips. Angler. And uh, my, my youngest son went off to college this summer, so I, I made a point to get out with him. And uh, we went out with a, a, a booster on his boat uh, in the ocean, which I don't do a lot. But Ooh. we caught six marlin in one Dang. trip, oh, wow. which was pretty epic, five That's blue big. and a white in Jeez. one day. And uh, I caught two of them. My son caught two, and his friend caught one, and another guy on the boat caught one. So that was a pretty cool day. Um, went fly fishing, went bass fishing with Jordan Waters. Um, nice. Yeah, we've had some fun, and that's what I love about North Carolina. I can drive, fly fish in the mountains, go to the ocean, deep sea fish, go to the lake, freshwater fish, and so yeah, I, I get my fill of that. Not bad. Well, big not fish bad. hopefully equals big wins that's this right. season yeah. too, yeah. coach. Absolutely. Uh, Dave Dorn, we appreciate your time. Thanks for having Looking me. Go pack. This season, we got much more coming up from ACC kickoff here in Uptown Charlotte. Of course, a lot to discuss. I'm though. hanging out with Mac. We're gonna do <laughs> quarterbacks. We're gonna break down quarterbacks. Well, I'm, I'm, I have lost some games. <laughs> coming up next, Jordan Waters, David Van. They'll be joining the ACC huddle crew. They're back there, locked and loaded and ready. EJ Manuel and the crew. They're excited to speak to them. Stick around. Welcome back to ACC football kickoff. A little NC State Wolfpack action in Dave Dorn's 11th season. They finished 9-4 and four last year. That is eight games in four straight seasons for the first time in program history that they've won. The pack has numerous incoming transfers, including this guy we've talked a ton about today, Grayson McCall, making the move from Coastal Carolina to Raleigh, and he passed for more than 1,900 yards with 10 touchdowns last season. And you know the name by now, number 10. Casey Concepcion is back, the rookie of the year. They've added some more playmakers, and on the other side of the ball, Number one in your hearts and in your playbook, Davin Van returning on the defensive side uh -oh. of the ball. We got Jordan Waters. We got Davin Van with us now from the pack. First of all, welcome in an NC State pin. Oh, yeah. And uh, for you, nice to have him on your squad now. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, how was that, though, man? Yeah. You come from Duke, not even NC State. Did they receive you well? Or? Oh, yeah, they did. But some of the people that back at Duke weren't yeah, happy. But type of way. It's all love, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got that degree, main thing, right? I did. Yeah. My mom did. would beat my tip. I, yeah, did. I saw you just got your degree, right? Did yes, you just sir. graduate? Yes, sir, I did. Where, where did that rank as far as your accomplishments? Yeah, it's life? up there. It's up there for sure. Uh, my mama always wanted me to do that, so I'm, I'm proud of that. Wow. Should nice. be really proud of that. Uh, today, on a day like today, and you're representing your school, what does it mean to you to be repping NC State? For me, it means a lot. Like, even just being here in front of y'all guys, it's, it's a lot, man. I'm from Fremont, North Carolina, small town. <laughs> And there's a lot of people that would love to be in my shoes. So I'm just, I'm grateful to be here. Awesome. Look, I saw you did a youth camp. Was this something that happened during your life growing up that kind of inspired you to want to do this when you got yeah, older? Yeah, uh, like I, my cousin Shaquille, man, I look up to him. He's always doing something for his, his community. And growing up, I was like, whenever I get the platform, I'm going to do something for mine. So I got the chance and I did something and they love it, man. I love to see the kids happy and I, I love making people happy back home. Davin, for you defensively, man, I feel like NC State's that's always been y'all's calling card. The defense has always kept you guys in a lot of games. Peyton Wilson's now moved on to NFL. What's the expectation for this defense in 2024? I mean, it's just the same as it always been. Uh, go out there and dominate our opponents. Uh, I mean, of course, we'll miss Peyton. Uh, he's a great player, a great person. Um, but we got a lot of dogs that are ready to go out there and play. 
Jordan, uh, just one quick mo last, one more memory about your time at Duke. That Clemson game? Oh, yeah. Was that fun or what? Man, it was great. I grew up a Clemson fan. Uh, yeah. So putting the nail, you, you kind of, <laughs> yeah. that run you had kind of put the nail in the coffin, I love, too. I love that. I grew up around a lot of Clemson fans, and just that moment, was it was great. Yeah. So yeah. now you, you, you're you going to NC State, obviously. obviously. Why the move and why NC State? Uh, first of all, my, my coach left, uh, Coach Elko. He was a great coach. He left. And then for me, I wanted to stay in North Carolina another year, be around my family and friends, and to know I could go to NC State, play some good football, right. and be around my family. I couldn't. Perfect. Yeah. Daddy, yeah. you said y'all got a lot of dogs on the defense. I'm looking at Sean Brown. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more about him? Yeah, I mean, he's a he's a great dude. Um, he always bringing the energy. He's always bringing the boom. Uh, he's a great person to be around, um, and I just love the way he works. Did he add any weight to, to move to help with the transition? Yeah, he's, he's working backer? on that. Yeah, he's working on that weight right now. Sean nice. Brown also told me he's a really good bowler. I don't know if you guys can confirm, but nah, he's says captain. He's uh, captain. Yeah. captain. <laughs> All right, so I guess that was a lie last season. Uh, it, for you, Davin, uh, on that defensive line, you rock the number one, and that's a really special number. I know you were awarded it last year. Uh, the privilege of being able to do that. What does that feel like having that on your shoulders, and what that one represents to you in your eyes? Um, I mean, I enjoy it. Um, I appreciate Coach Doran. I'm honored to wear number one. Um, but to me personally, it just means that I got to, you know, continuously get better and just become a better leader every day. Yeah. Is, is the NIL stuff at NC State better than I'm assuming it is? I saw Invisalign. You, gotta, you did some Invisalign <laughs> stuff. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I saw you McDonald's. At, at my Was that right? Hey, man. Coach, somebody told me if you ball, they'll call. Yeah. That's, it. That's it. Fact. I'm like, how is it adjusting to that? Because because it, it's a new uh, part of college football. So you're doing commercials and all of that. How are y'all receiving that attention? Uh, for me, I try to just handle it outside of football during the off season. Like when the season start, uh, even next Wednesday, all the NIL stuff is is over. It's strictly football. Facts. I'm kind of the same way. I mean, it was a little strange at first, like NIL becoming a thing. Um, but I think it's great. I appreciate, you know, all the opportunities. Nice. Jordan, uh, you guys get a new quarterback as well. Uh, Grayson McCall is yeah. here with you guys today. How has he kind of led this offense from the spring since the time you've been there? Man, at he's State? natural, man. I knew Grayson before, not personally, but just watching. Because I'm from Carolina, so we watch Coastal Carolina. And the trash talk, his demeanor, his swagger, he bought here. I, I love it. I'm all oh, for it. Oh, he's a trash talker, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Hey, Davin, nice. Davin, has he chopped him? Yeah, I can you? confirm. I can okay. confirm. Right. Yeah, he is. Okay. Are you too? You a trash talker as well? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, like Davin, case, man. Do you have a, do you have a uh, toughest opponent? Anybody you went up against that you have a lot, a lot of respect for? Like individually? Yeah, individually, like? any any particular guy, or maybe a teammate that you have little wars with at practice. <laughs> um, teammate wise, I would say uh, Jacarius Peak. Um, watching him grow and become a better player every year. Um, I assume you, you've been part of his growth. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Schooling him a little bit. Yeah, just a little. But I mean, it's a little harder now. He's he's a lot <laughs> lot bigger now and. Uh, He's developed very well, so I'd say he's probably the person on the O-line who has my most respect. Good. Davin, what's the key for this team to get over the hump, man? I mean, you guys are always right there in the hunt toward the end of the season, you know, close to 10 wins. Every year, it seems like, at least since I've been here, and even when I was in college, NC State was like that team that was always giving us a fit when we were at Florida State. What's the difference this year to get over that hump? Um, I think just the depth that we bring and the experience, um, and we just got to keep our heads down and keep working. Um, I think we've adapted the – you know, mindset of hard work is not punishment, it's our solution. Um, we kind of just adapted that very well and we're, we're attacking every day. Jordan, was there anything that you worked on in the offseason that you focused on? Because I watch your game and you're the complete player to me, so was it something you wanted to get more consistent at? Yeah, my speed, man. And shout out to my cousin, she killed. Uh, after spring game, he flew me out to Tampa and I worked out at House of Athlete for three weeks, man, and just training my speed. and Yo Murphy, my, huh? Yeah, my yeah, dog, yeah, yeah, he cool yeah. with my conditioning. And Cuz paid for it all, man, and he, and he wow. wanted me to be great, and I appreciate him for it. Okay, yeah. awesome. for, he's referring to Shaquille Leonard, who plays linebacker in the NFL. You have some one-on-one -on -one battles. Have, have you gone up against Big Cousin? Man, he's scared. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I, I hope you see this. All right, D, I hope you're watching. I hope you see this. We'll be clipping you can put on Instagram, battle. and oh, yeah. they'll definitely I'm gonna see I'm going to tag him in yeah. it, too. <laughs> Jordan, break down that running back room for me. Hollywood Smothers, there's, there's a couple others that, that are in the mix there, yeah, too. Yeah, man, we got Hollywood, uh, Kendra Raphael, the Speedsters. They can go out and line up at receiver but the two guys that don't get a lot of attention is Demarcus Jones and Jordan Poole that, as they should they do all the dirty work that nobody sees and going out there and blocking DNs and stuff like that and those are the guys I want to recognize 
Wow. Yeah, now that you're on the same offense with Casey Concepcion, I mean, how good is this dude? How good can he be? <laughs> He's a dog. So I've seen him play because I, I right. played him. But then you get in practice, man, and he practiced the same way as he plays. Like, he catch wow. a little a hitch, and he's running all the way 100 yards. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, he's good, man. Davin, you're not probably the guy who gets the uh, microphone in the helmet. No, sir. But, uh, <laughs> but, it, but it is different. There's your teammate. Which one of your teammates is getting the mic? Uh, Caden Fordham. All right, so Fordham gets it. Does it change the way he's able to communicate to you guys? Can you do things faster now? or Do you see any difference, or is it only him? Um, yeah, I think it improves our communication it makes things more smooth um you don't have a coach running up and down the sideline yelling at yelling across the field trying to get the call right so i think it just makes communication a lot smoother and more uh effective yeah if the offense i guess if they can go faster you guys gotta be able to go yes sir it's just as fast yeah yeah you're telling me your defensive coordinator tony gibson ye yells <laughs> down the field yeah, you can hear him from <laughs> two, 200 yards away i could never <laughs> has, there, has there ever been a d coordinator that didn't scream <laughs> uh, we were talking to coach dorn earlier and he was talking about his fishing this summer you guys had a little fishing outing jordan what yeah, what man. was the day like uh, we went to uh one of this dude's house uh, academy we went fishing and at first he was killing me man he had like three sniper bags. And I, I'm low-key jealous. I didn't tell him that, but I'm over there, I'm over there looking at him hot. But I, I think I got him in a second. We caught some big fish, some uh, big mouth bass and some carp and all that. It was fun. That nice. is really fun. Yeah. Like I said to him, because he went out in the ocean, caught some marlin too. Big fish. Yeah, hopefully. he fishes for real, though. He, he fishes for real. Yeah. He fly fishing all. Big fish wow. equals big wins this season, hoping for NC State. Jordan Waters, Davin Van, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Good Thanks. luck this season, guys. And for NC State, it, it feels like they know they got a little something up their sleeve. They're not ready to maybe reveal it just yet, but uh, getting to sit with Jordan Waters no longer in a Duke uniform is a big thing for him, and Grayson yeah. McCall is sharp. Well, Jordan Waters, I patted him on the shoulder when we finished. Yeah. I mean, this dude's arm is ah. yeah, yeah. huge, man. But, yeah. you know, I remember being at the gym at there in Duke. We were there for a road show, and he was in there working out, getting extra work done. So NC State is really lucky to have him because he's a guy that's not going to just be a good productive player. I think he's also going to help the running back room as well. Any freshmen or sophomores that are going to look up to him as a grad transfer and going to understand how to be an effective college football player. And, and again, he has a bright future. Excuse me. And again, yeah. the schedule is so nice. Yes. On yeah. paper. Yeah. Yes. Well, you're it right. Is. On paper. But I'm just telling you, yeah. you, sometimes you can look at the schedule and go, I don't care how good we are. <laughs> right. We're going right. to get whipped a couple times. or there's gonna, It's going to be – every game is going to be crazy. But I think I think they've got a team that's really, really talented and uh, the staff is, is unified as always. But I do think their schedule is going to play – a really good favor for them. And we talk about UNC being <clears throat> under the radar. Like, we talk about NC State, but nationally nobody's talking about them. Yep. So right. I feel like they could easily have a 10-win season yes. and start to really make some noise. Uh, you lose Peyton Wilson on that defense, but – Dave Dorn's got those guys playing together. They're going to play hard. Grayson McCall is going to get that offense rolling. Yeah, so I, I like what they're building. Yeah, they have two great coordinators, too, and Robert and I and Tony Gibson yeah. there in Raleigh. Of the 2024 ACC football kickoff, the Wolfpack of NC State have joined us for our 30 minutes. We will spend 15 minutes with our head coach, Dave Doran. We will ask those folks that please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone your way. Introduce or reintroduce yourselves, please, to our coach and our student athletes, especially for those who are watching at home. And we will start, coach, with our first question. It'll be to your right in the third row. How you doing, Coach Doran? Good. Good. You know, Coach, it's very cloudy here in Charlotte, but State's future seems bright this season. <laughs> and one of the big reasons for that is it seems like you guys have been super active in the transfer portal. You got two offensively skilled guys over there from the portal, Chaz Wallace from Colorado, a couple of defensive guys from the Big Ten and SEC. My question to you is, how much of a role has the transfer portal played for you and your program? You know, I think year to year. Um, for us, it's just another method of adding talent, uh, adding the key ingredients to the roster, and, and it's all based on need and where you may have a void. You know, in the past, um, pre-portal, you would look into the junior college areas uh, and, and sometimes find a transfer that was a grad uh, to fill a spot where maybe you had an injury or a player left early to go to the NFL. Obviously, as you guys know now, there's outflow and inflow coming in at different times uh, differently than there ever has been. And so for us, it's assessing your roster. It's never ending. It changes weekly on kind of where you're at um, based on the health of what's going on, who's coming back, where you think you need to be better. 
And just getting into to last season and how all this stuff came together, I mean, we've uh, revamped our recruiting office two years ago. And, and once this stuff started, felt like we were chasing our tails a little bit. And so really came up with a plan um, really based on NFL model on how to assess, uh, how they evaluate once players uh, are deemed players they would want on their rosters, how do they go about the process, and, and then integrating that into our program um, of a great recruiting staff. And so it was regionally based. And you know, you look at Jordan and, and Grayson, two guys that chose to move on from their schools. They were guys that are in-state players to us and guys that uh, I knew would have personal value in staying home and, and doing something with a team that has the largest alumni base in the state. And sometimes things just kind of click, you know. And there was a bunch of guys in this cycle that wanted to come back to the state. Noah Rogers, Dale and some others, uh, several guys, you know, that were from Raleigh or from North Carolina that left and wanted to return back closer to their families and be a part of our program. And we were just able to get the right type of guys. And that's the biggest thing, you know, when you want talent, that's one thing. Um, being here 12 years now, I'm not going to take a risk on the culture with that talent. You know, you have to find guys that fit what we're all about. And it's earned, not given. It's guys that, that want to work and that enjoy the brotherhood of the game, that are willing to sacrifice um, for the cause. And, and that's really, you know, we were blessed this year. We had a bunch of really good players that fit the uh, kind of the design of what we were doing. Uh, that fit the returning players as well. You know, guys like Davin that have helped build this program. We don't want to sacrifice all the hard work of the players that have been here for a guy that's just coming in for a year. They needed to understand that they were joining something and, and in that helping them continue to grow what we do and increase what we're doing. And, and so we're very pleased. You know, obviously, two of the guys are here. But the team's you know, pretty mixed. If you look at that recruiting class, there's still a, a great emphasis in high school recruiting as well. Coach, follow the center aisle up to the left, gentleman in the white shirt. Coach, these last couple of years, your team has talked about wanting to be different, doing things that take this program to the next level. What have you seen from your guys this year in 24 that might prove that they are different? Well, we're about to hit the grass on Wednesday. And so you know, I think every day we're out there, it's, it's a measuring stick. It is, and you know, we're one of five programs um, over the last four years that have won eight or more games in college football. And so we've sustained uh, a level of competitive greatness that not many people have been able to do. Um, with that being said, we want to win a championship. And so different is that. You know, it's taken the program from the second most wins since 2020 to winning the league, and that is different. And so. You know, what we did last year and the year before and the year before was good. You know, winning nine games is good. Uh, we don't want to be good. We want to be the best at what we do. And, and so these guys understand that. We've talked a lot about what it looks like um, to be the best and, and how do we do that and using the voice of the players to describe that. And, and then what does it not look like? What do we need to stay away from? What do we need to safeguard our program from? And so, you know, there's been a lot of discussion. There's, there's obviously been a lot of hard work by these guys and, and our staff as we evaluate our schemes um, to utilize the roster talent and to utilize the coaching talent that we have and to be integrated together in that. And so each day, it's, it's really a challenge. You know, you go out there day by day just trying to be better than you were. You know, a year ago Wednesday when we started camp, that's a measuring stick to where we're going to be when we start camp on this Wednesday. And, and it's everything, you know. It's how the grades come in from the summer. It's what Thunder says about the summer workouts. It's what Justin Smith says about the guys in the training room. Uh, it's when I go down to the nutrition area and ask how the guys are doing. All the comments add up, you know. And so you're always looking for signs of improvement and signs where, hey, we need to call this up. We need to talk about this. We're better than this. And just holding each other accountable to what we want. We want to be elite. And, and that means everything that we do can't cut corners. You know, it's got to be something that we push forward together. Again, let's follow the center aisle up, this time to the right, gentleman in the green. Corey Smith with Back Pride. Dave, you know, the last few years, the running game hasn't quite been there for this offense, but you get a guy like Jordan Waters out of the portal. 
you know, how much better does that make this run game? And, and do you feel like that's more of a bell cow back type of guy for this offense too? Well, yeah, Jordan's going to help us in the run game for sure. I think, you know, the whole offense um, in general, it always starts with what is the quarterback going to do, right? And, and we feel great about what Grayson can do. Um, and then the offensive line, the blocking schemes that those guys are good at and the depth that you have there, the, how the tight end plays into that run game. And then the receivers, the blocking on the perimeter is critical. You know, it is. And so there's no doubt being balanced on offense um, is something that you know I like. At the same time, we're going to play to our strengths. And to answer that question today, you know, we need to get on the grass. We need to go through training camp. We need to see where we're at. Feel good about not just Jordan, but the running back room in general. Uh, it's a good room. Uh, there's great leadership, uh, but there's good depth and there's competition and the guys are working hard and Jordan's done a really nice job showing them what it looks like, you know, coming back from the season he had last year and, and you have young guys below him and, and that's part of your job as an older player is this is what it looks like, this is what it doesn't look like and holding those guys to a standard. And as we get into this, I know Coach and I and, and the staff on offense, Offensive football has changed a lot. You guys know that with the rule changes in football, with the alignment downfield and RPOs and the tempo. And, and now you have another change. You know, you have sideline communication, uh, which allows our coaches to speak to these guys in the huddle uh, on the field. And so you're going to see another evolution in how that plays into offensive football uh, this fall, which really hasn't been talked about a lot. But, you know, I'm excited to see how that does things for us and how we can take advantage of what those rules bring. And, you know, I think for Grayson and for any quarterback, he would tell you having a run game helps. It changes the coverages you're throwing the ball against. It does. And, and if they're worried about what's going on with those handoffs and, and the pressure we can put on people, not just with the runs, but the RPOs behind them, it opens up a lot of things. And when you're talking about getting one-on-one -on -one coverage with the receivers that we now have, obviously KC coming back, but the way Dakari Collins came on in the spring, the way that you know we've seen Wesley Grimes and Noah Rogers um, come in also from the transfer portal, the, the weapons are different for him out there. And so it really plays into the entire thing. And not that you just call plays where you're taking what they give, but sometimes you are, you know? And when you can spread the ball around to different people, it just opens up things and creates a different pressure system on the defensive coordinator. And that's one of the things that I really like about football. You know, it's just trying to create chaos uh, on the other side of the football. You know, if you're on offense, if you're on defense, whatever that is, let's make their jobs really hard. Coach, right side, front row, right in front of you. Coach, Dan Tortora, Wake Up Call, DT.com. How are you? Good, bud. Looking at the fact that, like you said, you've spent a lot of time within the ACC, you've seen change. You've seen new institutions come in now, SMU, Cal, Stanford. Mm -hmm. We see accomplished greatness, but when you look at this conference throughout, how would you define it and who's coming in and what this looked like as you step forward as a coach, one of the longest tenured coaches in the conference? You know, I think maximizing the gift that God gave you um, to me. Uh, one of the tenets, one of the standards of a program is no underachievement allowed, you know, and I think that's just maximizing the opportunity you have as a person. Accomplishing greatness is that, you know, when you go to bed and lay your head down at night, did you do everything you could that day to be the best version of yourself? And if I get enough players and coaches to do that on a daily basis compared to those we compete against, the score ends up being the consequence of those actions. And, you know, what does greatness look like for NC State? Obviously, we want to hold that trophy up at the end of the year. Okay, and there's a lot of ways to define it. But day in and day out, it's about maximizing the gift. You know, I think we're all... You know, you, you expect to wake up every day. You expect for things to be a certain way, and we all know that's not reality. You know, every day we get is a blessing. And so taking advantage of that blessing, it's something that, you know, the older I get, um, the more that I value, I do. And really the relationships and the gratitude I have for the staff that I get to work with, for the players that I get to coach, I mean, I got a great job. I got great guys to work with, and I'm thankful for that. You know, I'm thankful that these guys are here. I'm thankful that they're getting ready to go to work and the, and the work they put in this summer. And they know it's going to be hard, and I look forward to that with them. You know, when you talk about accomplishing greatness, I don't think it's just something you can define in one sentence. I mean, it's 
Football seasons are crazy. I mean, the emotional swings that take place day to day, minute to minute, the amount of things that happen over the course of the year and how fast it goes within that million things that goes on. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a fun journey with these guys. And so just, you know, really thankful um, for the opportunity to do this with them and looking forward to where it goes. Coach, thank you. You referenced these guys. Let's go ahead and start meeting these guys. You can you. trade places with Grayson. Grayson, if you would, please come up. Folks, once again, if you would, please introduce, reintroduce yourselves in the media outlet that you are with. That would be great. Looking for the first hand that goes up. And Grayson, we're going to come back to the gentleman in the white shirt just up the center aisle and to the left. Grayson Boone, Locked on Wolfpack. Grayson, talk about what it's like being in a new program, your last year of college football eligibility, and you're being tasked as a leader. What does that mean to you? Yeah, it's, uh, it's refreshing to be in a new spot. Um, an unbelievable opportunity for me to to put on the red and black and uh, represent NC State. So, um, first of all, you know, just extremely excited um, for the opportunity that, that, that Coach Doran's given me. And um, as an older guy, I know that's, um, you know, that's my responsibility, especially as the quarterback, is to lead the guys, um, set the example kind of every day and show them how it's done. And um, the transition was really smooth, and those guys kind of showed me how we do it in Raleigh. Um, and now that I know the standard and know what we do, now it's my expectation and my job, my responsibility to come in every day and um, lead the guys. Um, and that starts, you know, obviously with my actions and then um, being more vocal on the field and just leading those guys in the right direction every day. Grayson, again, up the center aisle, back to the right. Corey Smith with Pack Pride. Grayson, I wanted to ask you about the in-helmet communication and, and that being a part of this as well. How much have you guys prepared for that ahead of fall camp, and or how much is that kind of a, an emphasis heading into fall camp as well? Yeah, it was something that uh, we implemented in the spring. Um, we're able to get that going, and um, something that's great. I think it's um, you know it's it's about time that, that college football did that. I think um, obviously as a quarterback, it makes my job a lot easier. I know um, for play callers and things like that, it kind of simplifies it for us. Um, but you know, it was awesome. Um, I mean, you have hiccups with the, with the mics and things like that on a day-to-day -day basis, but um, I mean, it's just like anything, the, the more you use it, the better you'll get with it. Um, but yeah, it's been great. Um, it was awesome to, to do it for the first time. And um, like I said, kind of simplifies things for me and we're able to communicate quicker and, and better. So um, yeah, it was awesome. Looking forward to, to using it in the fall. Grayson, we're gonna stay on that road. Just a couple of slots over to your right. Cole Beach Water Technician. Grayson, I was curious if there was like a moment or conversation with our player coach that really convinced you that state was a place for you to be in your last year. Yeah, um, you know, just just on my visit, walking into the place, I mean, just kind of overwhelmed with, with the facilities, and then um, as I as I get there and able to talk to Coach Doran, Coach Roper, Coach and I, and then meet some of the guys, it's it's um, it's an unbelievable place to be. The, the culture is extremely strong. Um, uh, Coach Dorn's been there for obviously over 10 years, and the standard that he's he's set in place, and um, the play style that that the football team has week in and week out, the the toughness and the grit, um, the blue collar mentality, kind of the chip on on their shoulder. That's you know that's been me. That's that's been me my whole career. So um, I think it's a perfect fit. It's a it's a perfect mold for for me to go in there and get the job done. But um, it's been awesome, unbelievable transition. Just really grateful for the opportunity to to be the quarterback at NC State. Grayson, now we're going to go right in front of him. Next gentleman up. Tyler Budge, CF Budge. Grayson, I see the hair starting to come back. Will the mullet be back in full force this season? It's coming, baby. It's coming. Um, the, uh, I, I showed up to Raleigh with a, with a buzz cut, and, and the guys were wondering what was going on. So I got a lot of mullet requests, and uh, I'm bringing it back for the guys. So ready to let this thing go. And sort of as a follow-up, when you committed to Coastal Carolina back in 2018, they were just in their second year as an FBS program. Now, this year, you're going to be the starter in a power conference team. Can you describe what that journey has been like going from Coastal to, to now? Yeah, um, God works in mysterious ways. God's so good and, uh, you know, kind of surreal for me to be here at ACC Media Day going into year six um, as the quarterback at NC State. So um, it's been an unbelievable journey, uh, a lot of ups, few downs, um, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. I'm so excited um, for this upcoming year. And, just so grateful. Uh, every day I walk in the building with a smile on my face, but I truly am grateful to, to be in Raleigh and, and to be with the guys. So um, obviously one trade my time at Coastal Carolina for anything. It kind of, you know, made me who I am and, um, you know, love that place. But, you know, looking forward and really excited to be in Raleigh to play for NC State. Grayson, your last question will come from right up there in front, in front of you. 
to your right. And Dan Tortora, Wake Up Call DT Doc. You went into it a little bit of your relationship with Coach and why that spoke to you, but you said being around the guys, like something just sold you on the Wolfpack to know that there's one more ride, one more opportunity this season for you. <clears throat> what is it about the culture and the environment of this team that you felt like had to be a place for you to spend that last year? You know, the best football teams I've been on are, are player-led teams, and, and you, you get that vibe right when you walk into the building. You have guys like Davin Van and, and players that have been there a long time that um, have put in the work and kind of set the standard and, and continue to build on it year in, year out. And, um, you know, sitting down, talking to the guys, I mean, it, it really, I know everybody says it, but like, it truly is like a family identity in that building. Like, the guys love each other, and it's a special place to be. Like Coach said, like, he's around great staff, great players. Like, he loves doing what he do, and, like, I'm the same exact. You walk in that building and like it, it, it's a good time to be there. Like it's exciting um, to be in there with the guys. And I mean, when I, whenever I walked in and walked out on my visit, I knew that was the place for me. And um, you know, a lot of buzz in Raleigh right now with um, you know obviously the, the men's and women's basketball team and, and baseball. So um, a lot of energy, a lot of support from from the fan and the fans in the community, and um, ready to get this thing rolling, take this momentum, and, and keep it going. So thank you. Grayson, thank you. We can switch places with Davin, and we'll have Mr. Van come up and spend a little bit of time with us. Once again, folks, please introduce yourselves and the outlet that you are with. We will look for hands in the air. Who would like the first question? We're going to take to the right side. Davin, the gentleman with the glasses, about fourth row near the camera. Hey, Davin. Brian Perl with Pat Pry. I just wanted to ask you about uh, how this – Stepping up as a defensive leader this year, his second year in the number one jersey. I mean, a, a big name, a lot of NC State fans. Peyton Wilson off the NFL now. How much are you specifically looking forward to stepping up as a leader on the defensive side of the ball? I'm looking forward to it a lot. Um, you know, I had some great guys in front of me coming up. Uh, Drake, Peyton, Zay, all those guys. So they've taught me a lot in my four years that I've been here. So I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm excited to, uh, you know, take charge and be the leader of the defense. Davin, a follow-up to that from the podium. Uh, you were awarded the number one jersey. Coach Doran said because you play with one speed. What speed is that? Uh, 100%. 100% uh, of time, you know. Uh, that's something Coach uh, Thunder has helped install, in, instill in me and Coach Gibby, too. Um, just playing 100%, giving it all you got every time you go out there. So that's my one speed. Next question, right side, third row right in the middle. Hey, Scout Hughes from WBRF. You guys only leave the state uh, three times to play at Clemson, California, and then Georgia Tech. How important is that to play most of your games within the state of North Carolina this season? Oh, you know, that's real important. Uh, we have a great fan base. Um, you know, Wolfpack Nation helps us a lot uh, in games. You know, they, they bring the energy and stuff like that. So I think that playing most of our games in state is a really good opportunity for us, um, and we're going to enjoy every moment of it. Davin, from the podium, you were a um, wrestler in high school, heavyweight division. How does your wrestling background help you in football? Uh, it helps me a lot. Um, wrestling has taught me a lot about, you know, self-discipline, um, body leverage, body control, things like that. Um, so it's helped take my game to a ne the next level. You know, originally I didn't really want to wrestle, but my mom kind of forced me to. So I'm, all, I'm appreciative of that. Um, but, yeah, it's helped me a lot, for sure. Front row right in front of you to your right. Dan Tortora, wake up all DT.com. The, the video, that decision for you to come back, just that moment going through that whole process, bring me into that and how much fun that was to do with your family and also the why of doing that. Because when we hear from NC State, there's something about when you're there, you stay. And Coach was talking about, you know, that nucleus, that culture. So why did you decide to do it one more time? Um, you know, there was a lot of things that I wanted to work on personally. Um, and Coach Dorn has helped me a lot with those things, uh, mentally, emotionally, and physically as well. But it was more of the mental and emotional part. That was really one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to stay. And I also felt like there was a lot of unfinished business that I, I had to, you know, wrap up before I left. So those were kind of the biggest factors in why I stayed. Diving back towards that center camera gentleman with the green shirt. Corey Smith from Pack Pride. There's been a lot of talk this offseason about the revamped offense and, and how good this offense is going to be. You know, on the defensive side of the football, are you guys taking that a little bit personally? Is, you know, it, maybe the side of the ball is getting a little bit overlooked this offseason? Uh, of course, we take it a little bit personally, but I mean, it's understandable. I mean, a lot of people like, uh, think that 
because we lost Peyton, we lost our whole defense, but that's definitely not the case. Um, you know, the transfer portal has helped play a really big role in that. Uh, we got some, some dogs that are ready to go out there and go play. So our defense is going to be real good. Devin, your last question from the podium. You spoke about family. You've got your younger brother on campus, redshirt freshman Rylan. Uh, do you give him his space? Do you guys hang out a whole lot? Does he have his own identity? Describe that relationship. Uh, yeah, we see each other every day. I mean, of course, in the weight room and stuff, but we love hanging out outside of football. Um, you know, having my little brother at NC State with me kind of takes the brotherhood aspect of football to a whole new level. So I really enjoy being, you know, a part of his college football journey, and I really enjoy him being part of mine. So, Davin, thank you. You can switch places with Jordan, and we'll finish up our time with the Wolfpack with Jordan Waters. Jordan, as you get set, your first question will come to your left, second row. Mayor Dunsham at the Players' Lounge. How are you today, Jordan? I'm good. How about you? I'm doing well, thank you. So you transferred in from Duke. Can you share a little bit about your transition into the Wolfpack? Uh, that transition was great. Uh, everybody welcomed me with open arms. There was no ego. Uh, everybody knew what we came to do, and nobody felt any type of way. And uh, Everybody's great, man. I love to be here. I'm excited. I'm happy, and I'm blessed. Jordan, a follow-up to that from the podium. You were with one family for so long. How have you approached being the new guy in the new family? Uh, just the same way I did that one. Like I said, everybody open, uh, welcome with me, open arms. Uh, just great coaches, great staff. No one treated me differently because I come down the road. Uh, Coach D welcomed me. We went fishing a couple times and I beat him in fishing. So I, it's been fun. <laughs> kind of. Uh, Jordan, to your right, third row. How you doing, Jordan? TJ Wilkerson from 90.9 The Light. My question for you is, coming into this program and working with guys like Robert and I, the offensive coordinator, um, what has that been like for you, especially from a guy that's been at so many other stats? Oh, it's been fun. Uh, when I first got here, we went in and he showed me all the film of him lining running backs up at, in the slot, the wide out. And I feel like I fit right in. I feel like I can play all three downs, uh, catch the ball, anything. And I feel like I could fit right in. First row, Jordan, right in front of you to the right. Dan Tortora, wake up call, DT.com. Jordan, for you, there's a history at NC State of some strong running backs. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean to be able to carry that torch? You have one more season, one more go at it. How would you like to be remembered in that long line of reputable running backs? Uh, I got one more year, and I just want to be remembered as a, as a great teammate. Uh, I, I do want to go, come in here, play some good ball, uh, rush for a lot of yards, but just to come in and be a good person, be the best team I could, and remember, be remembered as a great person. Jordan, we'll go back to the right side, third row with TJ. So Jordan, in high school, you played running back, wide receiver, and quarterback. Is that correct? That's correct. What is it about the running back position that you love so much compared to the other two? Uh, it's easy for me to get the ball. <laughs> All I do is turn around, hand it off to him. But it's, it's fun. Like I came in as a safety, and I, that wasn't for me. I, ran, I went to running back, and all I got to do is get out, go out there and run and not get hit, or try not to get hit. So it's like backyard football. Anything else for Jordan at the podium? Seeing none, Jordan, good luck. Wolfpack, thank you very thank much. You. Folks, due up in the room at 11 o'clock is Syracuse. We'll see you then.